Welcome back, Disc Golf World. You are joining us for your 2021 Professional Disc Golf World Championships, brought to you by Grip Six Belts. My name is Kevin Jones, and joining me today is Luke Humphreys. We are bringing you guys the back nine coverage of round one with some legends. Luke, are you ready for this? Dude, I cannot wait. Guys, our 2021 GK Worlds coverage is brought to us by the Disc Barn, excellent company that has supported GK for just about the entire season. Check them out at thediscbarn.com. Thank you guys for participating. Man, we got a great back nine for you guys, and it starts with a triple mando, Kev. Starts with a soccer goal hole. This one, you've got to go through the triple mando. And then catching the ground play to get all the way around the corner to the basket is the challenge. This grass is really thick here. It's not like you're going to just catch edge and skip through it unless you hit the tee box area. Yeah. Goal this number one, make it through good. the soccer goal. Yeah. That's more skip than you usually see. It is just past the tee box area is good as well. Kept it low. Great shot from Avery. Yeah, that was really well done. Ooh, and the height on that's looking good too. Almost catches the tee box area, and that's going to cost him. It's looking about 45 feet away now. Yeah, I was one foot short of getting a nice skip. Another good-looking shot. Over there, he said. Not a terrible skip. That kicked him into the circle. Let's see what Greg's got for us. Needs the carp path. Oh, almost gets it. That would have been huge if he got it. It had gone all the way. This hole would be so much easier if it was short, short grass like fairways or green style. Dude, Greg loses the glasses. Oh. I thought he was just going to bang it, stare it down. Glasses were so necessary on today's round. The sun Ooh. was so bright. Steve was showing us in... The front nine, how confident he is in his putting. He's been looking pretty good from inside the circle. Only one miss that I can remember. Nice putt from Avery, dead center. Great way to start his back nine. Yeah. If AJ's making those, he's turning in a solid round. That's an interesting outfit from AJ, too, today, especially with uh, the announcement from Discmania that they're, they're kind of separating ways from Innova. You know, he's played Innova, then became the team manager for Discmania, so I wonder where his, his loyalties are kind of lying these days. He's wearing the all black. Oh, logo-less? Or I haven't, I haven't, a I haven't logo noticed. A logo-less shirt. Yeah. Okay. We didn't mention it on the front, but it's just interesting. Just something I noticed. Hole 11... Lots of stuff around the screen. How are you? You're playing the Spike Kaiser, right? I really like the Spike Kaiser play here, but this is wind dependent as a lot of these holes. You can go straight at it, you can go high. If you go high, this is a tight line. AJ's showing you that you can. Ooh. He did that pretty well. I thought he was going to go a little too far left there, but the disc came down nice and quickly. Yeah, I think. What is this? Left to right downwind. Getting more drop. Mm, this has got to get down. Or up. That was just, uh, there's not much safe area where that was headed. He was headed to a pretty densely uh, populated OB area, yes. I would say. Yes. Okay. Needs to get through the tree. I saw Eagle do this. It does get through the tree. He'll be about 38 feet. A little, a little bit lower than how you'd imagine it drawn mm -hmm. up, but I, that shot can work. Greg, this shot makes sense for him. Ooh, that looks good. Gets back to Heiser. Oh, no, just, okay. Thought it was going to hover too far inside the circle, though. That's great. Looking right at the headwind, though, I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm, it is. He knew that was off. Wow, two inches off, and he knew it instantly. He's a world-class putter. Yeah. Here's Steve Rico from the bunker. Cash is a par putt. Big par putt. Yeah, that is. Nice little leaning stepper from him. Oh, yeah. See the shoulders relax as the disc comes to rest in the basket. Really cool slow-mo. Nice. 
nice correction from Greg. That putt was no easy feat for him there. Mm -mm. He knows it too. Felt oh, good. Yeah. Look good, feel good, play good. AJ getting on the knee for this putt. You don't see it a lot. The only reason that makes sense personally to me is the, the angle of the disc when you're trying to fight the wind or when you're trying to use the wind, that I should say. Mm, yeah. He's a tall guy, too. When he gets down there, he kind of throws a straight putt. Doesn't really have to putt down at the basket. So. It can it can matter. It can change whether the wind's hitting the top or the bottom of oh, your we disc. See, we see Paige Pierce do it a lot. Right. So there are people that, that use it, have an advantage with it. Tight line here. Really easy to just turn it over and hit one of those poles or to oh. leak it left. This hole has a mandatory on it. You cannot swing it out wide to the left. This whole netting area is all safe. It doesn't matter. If you go through it, you're still considered safe. Really? This looks so good. Oh my gosh. Go in the basket. Good shot. Glad that didn't catch cart path or that would have been way further away. But yes, Luke, even if you went through a hole in this net and your disc went 100 feet into that area, you would still be considered safe. <laughs> You'd play it from in there? No. Okay. You would play it. I where suppose it where it entered. <laughs> I'm not quite sure on that, but I do know for sure it is in the rule book as wow. like a general rule. It's very interesting. This hole played oh, no. it so much harder earlier in the day than it is right now. It seems much more calm, and that opens up this fairway, actually, because when the wind's blowing, that net blows into the fairway. That was a fantastic shot from Joe Revere. Didn't even need the little kick at the end, but got it. Right when where that netting ends, an OB line actually extends forward. Really? Yes. Good two. Good two. So you can't just wrap it around the net and be okay. You'll find OB. AJ getting on a knee again. He's, He's liking it. Down. Yeah. It's working. He's made every one of them. And then Joe, like you said, what a fantastic shot. Yeah, Joe. <sighs> he has... He's just not feeling these baskets right now. <laughs> no, doesn't trust it until it's in. Yeah. You can see him just moving with the wind. And here we are, hole 13, 530 feet. This one's a difficult reach. You really don't just want to put it in play and find yourself taking a par here, and that would be nice. And the mountains in the background on that drone shot. This is a gorgeous venue. There's no arguing that. As you play these holes and you, whoa, Greg, no. What? I'm sure that was like a layup play. Oh, oh my oh goodness. Hey, <laughs> it was a layup oh without a doubt. We were table. already talking about it like it was in the water. <laughs> it was. Like, yeah. what happened there? It jumped out. Oh, huge break for Greg. That would have definitely put an end to his um bogeyless streak yeah for sure pretty big bank it had to jump up to that was just odd impressive skip that's good position from avery nobody really on this card with the exact skill set to really attack this hole. So it's really about putting it out there in a good a good spot, not finding that OB water, not losing a disc. Yeah, <laughs> similar to hole seven. Get your three on this one. And let people lose strokes to you. Yeah. 184 feet out, thanks to Bushnell. Nice upshot from Joe. Oh, yeah, dialed on that one. This one coming in is the third hardest hole. Let's see. A few more than a, a little bit of water on it. He was showing the camera. Just a little bit. I mean, if Greg continues this hot play and goes on to win this thing, or that one stroke maybe he won by, you think about that disc right there? <laughs> that would be a famous disc, that's for sure. No doubt.
That was a bomb from AJ. That was probably a 480 footer off the tee for him. Just a little 50 foot chip in. All these guys just going to take their pars once Greg cleans up. <laughs> They're probably having such a good time out there. What are the chances that these legends all get to play together first round of, of Worlds? It's just got to be a great experience for them. Disc golf is a relatively young sport, but its popularity makes it one of the fastest growing pastimes in the world. The PDGA is a not-for-profit, worldwide player organization dedicated to promoting the sport. Like a long drive off the tee, disc golf is soaring. So don't just be a witness to disc golf's explosive growth, be a part of it. Join the PDGA. All right, hole 14, short-ish hole, with lots of stuff around the green, especially that bunker you see left. It's really hard to pin this one, Kev. Yeah, I wish I knew exactly what the wind was doing. When I played it, it was a hard right to left. We'll be able to tell right now. Looks like it. Oh, my gosh. Doesn't look like as much of a right to left wind as Greg's disc carried pretty far to the right there. I feel like Greg slept with his discs last night. Those things are just doing what he wants right now. That thing looked like it was going out of bounds. And then. Wow. So, a nice turnover from Joe there. That's a technical shot right now. Looks like they're playing downwind right to left. Yeah. This looks great, too. Oh, my goodness. What a shot. You've got a one meter by one meter spot to land that if you want to put it that close. These old schoolers all throwing this nasty backhand line. That's got to sit, though. Yeah. Well out of bounds on the on that one. You don't see many backhands on this hole, and we just saw three in one card. Old schoolers, man. It's like only, only Barsby's throwing that finger pop. And he slips that putt in there. He's wow. running everything. <laughs> Dude, that body Why English. Is that? that is amazing. He had the lean on it. He had that world championship lean. Yeah, he's not afraid of any basket right now. I think it's that jump putt. He must be so confident in the jump putt. He says when his putting gets hot, there's no reason he can't win these things. No. This, this is how you see big numbers on this course. These greens become so treacherous. And he makes that nice oh putt there for gosh. bogey. That's a nasty bogey putt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nearly jumping out, but Joe Revere, dude, that guy was teacher of the year in Colorado. I'm pretty sure he's a high school science teacher. That would have been so cool if he was my teacher in high school. To have a legend in the game, somebody who's 1040, 1030 rated as your yeah. teacher? Seriously. Wow. It's a disc golfer's dream right there. Hole 15, par four, 651 feet. This is one of the hardest holes on the course, in my opinion. Doesn't see, it doesn't seem like the hole average is reflecting that, but this one is just, there's OB. Especially on this tee shot. It's one of the holes where you got to have a really well-placed tee shot. Greg looking good here. Let's see how his distance is. It's it's money. Yeah. We're all aiming with a sidearm. We're trying to aim at that big tree that you can see and then just with something overstable and then let it hook off to the right just like Greg did. If we're going to go backhand, it's nice to have a high shot so it doesn't have too much ground play. Oh, my gosh. That's just unlucky. Speaking of ground play, 
there's some room past that path, isn't there? Yeah. So he skipped all the way over the safe area. This is a better line. Oh boy. The backhand has oh a God. lot less room for error. Crazy ground play. We can see the wind. They got a right to left headwind. So that's how that big bounce just occurred. Safe. Yep, little Interesting short. Interesting run up he'll have, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Joe's getting two meters because that's barbed wire there. And I don't think you can even go with this basket. He's about 400 what? feet away. What? This man's wild. Are you kidding me? So good. Great shot, Joe. That spotter trusting that no bad bounces were going to occur very <laughs> early with the green. Extremely oh, no. awkward footing Get here. over there. Get. Oh, okay. This this guy's having some troubles. Looks like he hit inbounds up there and then bounced back into the water. Mm. The body control, though, that Steve displayed there. Wow. These guys, I don't like that backhand approach. Hanging it over the water like that, man. Well, they would argue that the, the curve is taking it away from the water, and so it makes it a better option. Yeah, well, it's like, I mean, you and I both know it's it's a fairway up there, a golf fairway, so you can play it left and just let it skip, 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 you know? Yeah, that can be a little scary, though, to some players. And it's a pretty much just like a mash flick. It's like a 350-foot flick. So yeah. if you don't have it, backhand's the play for sure. Getting aggressive, Steve, I like that. All out on the putt. This one did come in as the fifth hardest hole on the course, so. Tricky drive, tricky approach. One of the best holes out here for sure. Get in there, Greg. These guys are just laughing and joking the whole time. It's fun to see. Yeah, very lighthearted round. Yep. That nose down putt. He just kind of rocks it straight off of his hip. He uses that momentum and then just a little pitch off the hand. Much different putt there from Steve. Just a laser beam. Using the spin, little nose up. Hole 16 is a par 3 at 376 feet. This one's averaging just at par. This is a difficult birdie to grab though with the green just being so guarded. You can't, I mean, you can't attack this one no. right at it. No, you're exactly right. If you throw it 376 feet, you've made the wrong decision in, in our minds. You wanna throw this one 355 feet Yep. and then hit your 20 footer. That's what I think at least. There's no reason to bring those bunkers into play or to take the the long into play. This looks like a mid range from Joe. He's so good at putting. He's like, dude, give me anything. That looks a little low from him. And if you put it at 355 feet, you're looking at a nice uphill putt. That's pretty safe for the most part. It could, of course, hit the basket and roll, but you still have a backstop. So air balls are are safe. That's a good one for there. Not bad. This is powered. So that'll be in the bunker. Could be touching oh, look safe. Look at that. It is. It looks like it is. Come on. Get over there. Okay, Ooh. Joe. Don't want to see that one go out of bounds. That would have hurt. Greg, of course, is going to run this Lining one. Lining up a 60 footer. Oh, oh no. no! Get over here! Stop! Stop! Get stop, over! Stop! 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 <sighs> Safe. Well, there is no line on the bunker, so it's gonna be a close call, anyways. Wow! Hello, what a Steve. Sick putt. Barely in bounds, turns it into a birdie. Let's get the replay full extension. Slow mo's with mountains in the background, dude. Oh my. Gosh, that's the disc golf I love. Yeah, they hit a sweet spot. Man. 
Nice. A nasty putt from AJ tipping the cap. He deserves it. This birdie just feels so nice because you can't play it right at the pin. You have to really play a safe shot, pick your landing zone, and then make a putt. Mm-hmm. And I don't mind that. No, I don't either. Don't at all. It's much like a, a ball golf hole that you can't hit at the pin. You're, you're playing to a landing zone that's 15 feet away or whatever. Greg banging that to stay bogey free again. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is killing me. He is wearing his heart on his sleeve the entire round. He's getting his playing partner, Joe, laughing nearly every time he's tapping in, it seems like. All right, guys, and I want to note one more time that the Disc Barn is sponsoring this coverage for like the the fifth or sixth month in a row these guys have supported us go visit them at the discbarn.com thank you guys again hole 17 is at 375 feet there's water on the right side and behind a lot of people like to bail out left but aj does not aj is getting aggressive just barely finding the water there he'll be putting for par from around circle's edge well, i like this this is better Nice ground play. Mm. Played a nice fairway driver. Beautiful shot from him. Really? So he's probably playing about 30 feet of ground play on this thing right here. Landing it short, thinking it'll... Yeah. A 350-foot overhead from Joe Revere right there. Like he'll, he'll straight up, he'll teach you about molecular science, and then he'll show you how to... Chuck a freaking frisbee over his head really far too. It's, man's got skill sets. Let's be honest. This is kind of like what I like to see. Give yourself a putt on this one too. Don't play it all the way to the basket. Trust that you've put the practice in. All over the basket. Just short from Joe. AJ's been looking good from here. Can't convert on this one. That would have been a streak if he makes that one, I'd say. Yeah, would have been. And Steve taking a stroke on the card. Mm. That's a nice tee shot to put him in that spot. Yeah, looking at the lake for the next hole, doesn't seem like the wind is up. Steve will be teeing first. It's nice for him not to see much wind. He'll be the wind read. It's only a 207-foot hole, but... Man, it's just like a really technical little shot to finish on, you know? Yeah, the island is really small. It's hard to park, and if you do park it, you dealt with some some stuff that you don't really enjoy dealing with. These rocks, no. anything can happen if it hits these rocks. Mm -hmm. It can sit there and park it, or it could easily roll out of bounds and send you to the drop zone. You want to play something with some height here? Ooh, I like this. Oh. Almost acing it. Wow. But Catching a bad reaction, but staying in the circle. Yeah, smashing the rocks there. It'll be a scary putt from, from there, but he has been looking good from there. Greg going pig needs to sit. Ooh, does. Oh, my gosh. Rolls out of bounds for a second. Rest in bounds. I'm sure he'll just be laying that one up. Are you? I guess I'm not. <laughs> he's ran every one of those putts so far. I would like to think that he's laying it up, but... Get up. Get up. Can't. And that got there so fast, didn't it? And it stayed in. He blasted it. What a play. Overstable disc again. Oh, no. Go. Got to be coming in early. Come on. Go. <sighs> not going to do it. Okay. So he'll be headed to the drop zone. Luckily, it's on the other side. It's just this putt that you shouldn't run. I've seen people running this... And I can't believe it. It's wild to think about. Yeah. Here we go, Greg. No way is he laying this up. Okay. Oh, he decided to lay up. Finally. Man, after an entire round of running sketchy putts, he considers eight to be the play. And wow, talk about a sketchy putt. Yeah. Rico staying solid from that distance. Yeah. So good. Greg just considering his eight. 
good enough. You know, this is the first round of a five round tournament. Yeah, that's a world champion move if I've ever seen one. Yeah. He he just knows when to do it. At least this round. Taking one of the only bogey free rounds of the A pool. Worked hard for it. Yeah, he really did. Hit some nice par putts. And there's just smiles from these guys. Lots of respect going around. The Legends card. Hundreds of tournaments won in between those guys. National tours, majors, world championships. There you see it there. Avery Jenkins, big stretch of birdies there in the middle. Worth noting, Steve Rico and Joe Revere, just you know, the odd bogeys that kind of kept them from getting those streaks going. And Nate Sexton and Ricky Wysocki up top, closely followed by Kevin Jones and Calvin Heinberg. That'll round out your lead card. Awesome to be with you guys. Thank you for joining us. 2021 Disc Golf World Championships here from Ogden, Utah. It's been a pleasure to be with you, Kev. Any last words? for? Yeah, the very honored to be here presenting you guys the World Championships. It's been a pleasure. We'll see you guys for round two soon. <laughs>